Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the first practice test for Chapter 4 on Variability. First question in this test is, which measure of central tendency is most influenced by outliers? Uh, the choices are the variance, range, standard deviation, or IQR, which is the interquartile range. The answer to this one is the range. Um, the reason for that is that the range can be thrown off completely by a single major outlier. Um, here I've got three box plots, and you can see, for instance, that the top one, the normal, uh, this is cholesterol distribution by uh, weight class of people, you can see that most of the people in the normal are pretty close to each other, and that there are some outliers, but even then they're pretty close. But we've got one outlier on the far, far right. That person is going to determine the range. and if you took that one person away, the range would sink dramatically, shrink, uh, shrink by about uh, almost 100 points on the cholesterol scale. If you took out that second person, it'd shrink another 100. And so you can see that the range is dramatically influenced by even a single outlier on either end. Um, I should mention, on the other hand, that that it does translate that one of the good uses of the range is to check for outliers. If you have a really big range, that may indicate that something's going on and needs a closer look. Number two, compared to a mesocurtic distribution, the peak of a platycurtic distribution is, uh, choices are narrower, generally bimodal, not as high, or skewed. Well, the answer to this one is not as high. Um, let's take a look at uh, the distributions. So the mesocurtic is the normal distribution. It's the one there in the middle. And mesocurtic means middle bulge, uh, so it's a middle-sized bulge. The platycurtic, which means flat bulge, is the one on the left. And you see it's flatter across the top, it drops off pretty sharply, and it's got very short tails. And the, the peak of the platycurtic does not go up as high because the uh, scores are distributed more uh, on the left to right. Okay, number three, what is the range for this data set? We've got five, one, two, six, and five. And the choices are cannot be calculated, 6, 2, or 5. Okay, uh, when you want to answer a question about the range, well, the answer is 5. And when you want to answer a question about the range, the first thing you should do is put the numbers into order. So here I've rearranged them as to 1, 2, 5, 5, 6. And the formula for the range, you don't really need a formula because all it is is the maximum score minus the minimum score. So in this case, that's 6 minus 1, which gets us to 5. So that's the range for the data. All right, number four, for a normal distribution skewness, um, A is positive, B is equal to zero, C is always calculated with the population formula, or D cannot be calculated. Okay, uh, the answer to this one is, is that for a normal distribution, skewness is equal to zero. Here's the a chart to take a, a quick look at it. The normal distribution is the red one that's in the middle, and there's a formula for skewness, and when you calculate that for a normally distributed data set, it comes out to zero. For the uh, distribution in blue, you calculate it, it comes out positive. For the uh, distribution in green, it comes out negative. But for uh, the normal distribution, skewness is equal to zero. All right, what is the sample standard deviation for this data set? And we have three, four, two, four, seven. Choices are 1.87, 20, 5, and 2.8. Now this is the first question that's gonna require some serious calculations. Uh, the answer to this one is 1.87, and let me show you how to get to that one. What I've done here is I've created a table, because I find it easiest to do this sort of stuff in a table. I've taken the variable, uh, which I've called x, and I've put the values in from highest to lowest. So now it's 7, 4, 4, 3, 2. You can see them there on the right. The first thing we have to do is we have to find the mean, because we're going to get the deviations from the mean. So I add those all up. So the sum of x, you can see there in the second from the bottom, if I add those all up, it's 20. And then to get the mean, which is here symbolized by a capital M because um, I can't put formulas easily into a, a Google Docs presentation. Uh, it's just the sum of x, that's 20, divided by the n, that's the number of scores, that's 5. So the mean is 20 divided by 5 is 4. In the second column, I, f I get the deviation, how far every score is from the mean. So that's written as either x minus m for the mean, or because the mean is 4, you can write it as x minus 4. So 7 minus 4 is 3, 4 minus 4 is 0, and we've got a 0, a negative 1, and a negative 2. Great. Then what we need to do is we need to square those deviations. That's in the third columns. 3 squared is 9, 0 squared is 0, 
negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4. And then we add those up. And at the bottom of that one you see it says sigma, and that's 14. That is the sum of square deviations from the mean, also called the sum of squares, also called SS. Shows up in another of other in a number of other uh, formulas we'll be using later in the semester. But that is a, a, a big part into getting the standard deviation. Now on the right side here, I've written as well as I could um, the formula for the sample standard deviation. It's a lowercase s. That's the symbol for the sample standard deviation. And it's the square root of this entire quantity of the x minus m squared. That's the sum. Oh, I forgot to put in a, a sigma there. I apologize. But it's the sum of square deviations from the mean divided by the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. Now, I already know that the sum of squared deviations from the mean is 14, so I can stick that in there in the second row. And then I go to n minus 1, that's 5 minus 1, which gets us to the square root of 14 over 4. 14 divided by 4 is 3.5. We take the square root of that, and we get 1.87, and that is the standard deviation. It's a fair amount of calculation. You're going to have to be able to do it a few times in the midterms and on the final. Um, again, it's easiest to set it up in a table where you put things into order and you start working that way. And we'll cover this more in class. Anyhow, that's it for the first pretest for Chapter 4. Thanks.